What's up, weirdo? Shay Tree Surgeon here with Shay Lisi, of course. Yeah, I'm doing my intro first. Deal with it, baby. The camera's out first. He who draws first gets to shoot first, baby. Shay Lisi over there, queen of the Florida men, mother of frogs, breaker of motorcycles. I think there's a couple other titles in there. I forget them. Uncle Bo Gator, gotta catch them all. There are very own reptilian over there. Uh, you know, he's mostly reptilian. Me and Shay Lisi are only half reptilian. And speaking of slick black reptiles, baby, Uncle Bo Gator showed up today on a night train. I wanted a night train so bad when I first saw it. You know where I first saw one? In a freaking ad in the Tampa Tribune in the newspaper. Remember they had an ad in there for the night train. I was like, that's for me, baby. Can I ride it? You can ride it. Hell yeah. Inverted front end. This thing is clean, man. I like it's debadged, inverted front end. It's got that solid rear wheel. This is a good looking bike, man. This is like the epitome 90s bad boy, but with a 2000s, with the 2000s motor. If you were riding around in a club in the freaking 90s and the 2000s, this was what you were on. Exactly the kind of bike that if I was a kid, I would look at it and go, that's the Harley Davidson I want. There's no mistaking what this motorcycle is. This is a Harley Davidson, end of story. I don't use turn signals, man. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know if any turn signals work. I feel pretty badass on this, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna start it up and just freaking girls, girls, girls starts playing. We are in two super old school Harleys, even though uh, the Stormster there, Velcro Fly, is brand new. It's got like a hundred miles on it. But these are two old school Harleys and one very new school Harley with Mike Branch taking over duties on the blacked out Pan America. All the new school and all the old school, but both in blacked out. Can ace of spades, girls, girls, girls. I don't want nothing but a good time, baby. This motorcycle is literally a 1980s music video come to life. Can't even tell you how badly I lusted after this bike when I was a kid. Now, when I say a kid, I meant in the 2000s, like the early 2000s when the night train first came out. So I wasn't exactly a kid. I was in my 20s, but this was still way out of my price range back then. In fact, the only thing in my price range was the bike I had, a 1989 Suzuki that was half falling apart. Yeah, there, whatever these things cost when they first came out, there's no way that was in the price range of the poor white trash kid I was back then. And the fact that I'm still in love with this bike after all those years, baby, I'm still white trash. I'm just white trash with a little bit of scratch these days, daddy, you know what I mean? I ain't white trash rich, take my word for that. But I might be like white trash after the first of the month and a couple of good scratch offs kind of money. That's kind of where I'm sitting at these days. And baby, that was always night train money. There she goes on the sports shirt with the you meet the worst people on a Honda t-shirt. I love it. We're kind of a confused bunch around here, but I dig it. Eh, not really that confused. We just like bike. And I love that inverted front end on this thing too. It looks like an old school one because it's a wide glide inverted front end. I bet it's like a Carlini or something, man. That's what a, a lot of dudes, that's what makes this thing even more like bad boy 80s and 90s because that's when those things are really popular this thing really is straight out of a music video <laughs> although i don't think it's gonna catch that 1250 sportster at all there he goes <laughs> my cameraman on his adventure bike i feel so i do feel pretty cool on this i'm not gonna lie to you dude i feel like it's exactly the kind of thing you should have a cameraman for welcome home be welcome to Brap Star as well here pretty soon. It was already home. I always felt that way to me. So we got lots of plants, already putting nut trees, uh, flower press to good use for all the orchids. I just said you ought to go to Publix and just pinch them all off. They got like 30 orchid plants in the front and they're all in full bloom. You ain't stealing the whole thing. Just a flower. You could probably get a couple hundred from there. I don't know. I don't see what the problem is. You guys vote down in the comments below if you think that's bad or not. Reddit will tear you apart for that. Yeah, the Reddit, the Redditors yeah, will get me. Will Reddit already hates really me. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, time to roll. We got saddlebags full of flowers instead of empty beer cans. What am I coming to? What is the world coming to? Who is shade tree surgeon even? A kindler, gentler shade tree surgeon with flowers in his hair. I still say Shay Lisi could have just stolen from Publix. Not stealing the plant. Just the flower, right? They'll grow back one day. <laughs> oh, 
always wave at kids. Rev your engines too, why the heck not? Never know when you're making a future biker. I love that. The moment dozens of people have been waiting for, the long awaited Cami Bay, finally meeting up and going for a ride on her monster, baby. Look at that, black on black on black. Let me tell you what, except for that dog hair, baby, don't worry. I'm Where's just, uh, I'm just, hel I'm just helping you out here, you know what I mean? I think there's one that. right there. That was my... <laughs> <laughs> Ducati, baby, it matches you, I love it. It's nice and clean, it looks good. Ducati. The only thing that looks better than this Ducati is you, baby. Yo, man, the Sportster is looking a little shabby next to that Ducati over there. Well, hell yeah. To me and Cami Bay's inaugural ride, her on the Ducati, me on the not Cotty. My Ducati's got a bad back tire. But I'll take what I can get, and what I'm getting right now is pretty nice. <laughs> Listen up, baby, whatever you want, times two. You look really cool. <laughs> You look really, really cool. Many of you guys are familiar with the cobblestone streets of Ybor City, uh, so I think Cammy should take the camera back. You know, I still help Cammy edit some of her videos, and uh, so, you know, I, I can't say for sure that I'm picking the bumpiest streets around when she's got the front-facing camera, but uh, I can say for sure. Hmm, 8th Avenue is a uh, cobblestone all the way down. Couldn't say why I chose it. Give me that wank, girl. <laughs> I know you feel silly, I promise it looks great. Okay, good. Such beauty, such grace. Oh my God, oh my Lord. Everything you want times two, a kingdom for a kiss upon your shoulder. It's easy to be a photographer when your model looks like this, all right? So it's like pan away from the Ducati. And then the look back and you're like, damn. Well, that's enough messing around from uh, me and Cammy. I don't want to stop. Listen, I don't want to stop. <laughs> when it comes to you, I don't ever want to stop messing around, all right? <laughs> we got a photo shoot to do later, but before we do that photo shoot, we got a live stream to do. All right, let's head on home. Also, snacks. I know. What I really love more than anything else is just gazing directly into your eyes. You can tell I'm looking at the... You can tell I'm... <laughs> All right, let's roll. I'm about to get in trouble. Oh, what Cammy doesn't know is... uh. Oh, did you just notice the GoPro? Yeah. You know, I've gotten pretty good at sneaking that GoPro into some uh, pretty dicey situations. It might. It's worth the risk, baby. <laughs> you know, YouTube does put a lot of restrictions on us, so I've decided that we're gonna be uploading a little more fun video to Cammy's free site, and th there's gonna be some stuff on there that you don't have to pay for, which is stuff that we just can't get away with on YouTube. Yeah, some of the stuff we like to film, some of the stuff I like to have fun with, you guys know. It's stuff that I used to get away with on YouTube all the time, but YouTube changes its rules and uh, we stay the same. Listen up, baby. You gotta risk it for the biscuit. Well, it's just the age of the adventure bike right now, which I'm not complaining about. This is a Kawasaki KLR 650, although pretty much anybody knows what a Kawasaki KLR 650 is. This is an adventure bike that has stood the test of time, and it definitely looks it. I always like to say after the bombs drop, there's gonna be two things left, cockroaches and Kawasaki KLR 650s, and that's gonna be it. In fact, I actually have a design on brapstar.com that looks pretty much like that. Fun fact about me, I used to want a Kawasaki KLR 650 so freaking bad because all I wanted was an apocalypse bike. Just a bug out, stone cold reliable, will ride through anything, drown it, beat it, set it on fire, shoot it, slap it, call it dirty names, spit on it, demean it, put on a strap on it. Hey, wait, whoa, whoa, okay, we're going a little too far though. But what I'm saying is the Kawasaki KLR 650 can take it, man. This is the kind of motorcycle that doesn't have a safe word. It lives for the humiliation and I doubt even Madame Hexa could get this thing to say on oh, oh, almost just knocked it over. This particular model was actually donated to Forgotten Angels and the gentleman who bought it, bought it specifically to donate it to Forgotten Angels. So we're gonna go on a mission of mercy. We're gonna get a couple things for up from Cycle Gear, oil, oil filters, stuff like that. And we're gonna bring this sucker back to life because guess what? I was just talking about that gold wing we're giving away to benefit Forgotten Angels. And the raffle for that gold wing by the time this video comes out will actually still be live. We're gonna be pulling the ticket for that gold wing the coming Friday after this video comes out, which this should 
come out on Sunday, I think. But after we pull the ticket for the Goldwing, of course, you'll still be entered for the $250,000 dream home. Someone is winning a house along with a Goldwing. Well, maybe not both, but you're still entered to win both. Well, after the Goldwing goes to its new home, guess what's next? You know, I say every bike's an adventure bike. All you gotta do is point it in the direction of adventure and twist the throttle. But this will be the first time we're actually giving away an adventure bike. And I'm really excited. Also, I've never worked on a Kawasaki KLR 650 before, so let's see if we can make that happen. Talking a big game about Brap Star and Forgotten Angels being hooked up right now and working together to change the lives of thousands of people across America, thousands of young men and women who've aged out of the foster care system. But, you know, I better, I better fix this bike up and keep up my end of the bargain, all right? Actually, no. Yeah, boy, that's more like it. You know, I was about to take the Pan America. In my head, I just said, it's so poetic. It's only fitting that an adventure bike should go on the mission to rescue a fellow adventure bike. As I was firing up with its starting cycle, its electronically lowering suspension, fuel injection, variable valve timing, what have you, LCD display, cruise control, off-road ABS. I just thought, you know what, baby? That Pan America, that's a hell of a machine, boy. That's a hell of a machine. But if I'm being honest, I think that the KLR 650 has more in common with an Evo Sportster than it does a Pan America. And as much as I love riding that monster, I had to concede. The bike that really should be running the rescue mission on the KLR 650 is none other than old dirty bastard Project Raw Dog. Because even though this motorcycle was inspired by the Pan America and it's uh, quite expensive bags, it has way more in common with the KLR 650 than it does the Pan America. These old dirty birds, they gotta stick together, you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just wanna give you this real quick here. It's a list of state statutes. Yeah, uh huh? Specific to motorcycles, so that way you know what the, what the state's looking for. I didn't do anything. Okay, just hand it out. All right, cool. No worries. <laughs> a list of state statutes to follow while you're on a motorcycle. That's very nice for me to poop on. So part of me really just wants to make jokes about the cop giving me that list of state statutes. And part of me goes like, he was really polite to me. And then a, even a third part of me that's paranoid is going, I bet he watches the channel. And he came over there and gave me the list of state statutes to see if he could watch a video later and see if I would make fun of it. Well, I am. I'm making fun of it. State statutes. Come on, man. You know, when the fuzz is looking, I'll make sure I fuzz. It's a good thing to have. Like when you're, when you're watching, I'll make sure I follow every single one officer. We're just a part of the law-abiding citizens club here. I wouldn't dare break one of the rules. Who, me? I'm pretty sure this motorcycle's breaking like six of those statutes just standing still, let alone moving down a public right-of-way. But no, he was very nice about it. <laughs> and I'm not always sure I look like the type of person that uh, that police officer should be nice to, so I'll just go ahead and say thank you for that one. Whoa! Whoa, man! I'm just trying to exist over here, lady. Take it easy. Talk about breaking some statutes. Come on now. Not at the stab and grab today. Today we're at the choke and poke. Or is it the rob and sob? Sometimes I forget. Rob and sob, choke and poke. Doesn't matter. They have all got their own brand of weirdness and I love it. Never seen a winter by hook or by crook, baby. Be putting some of them boys on their Harleys and their Rockford Fosgates to shame with that e-bike, all right? There he goes. <laughs> My man marching to the beat of a different drummer. I dig it. You know, I really was trying to figure out why the heck that cop pulled over and, and gave me that list of statutes, and I finally figured it out. Look at all the stuff here. What it is, it's a fun little game that he gave me, like a little challenge. What you're supposed to do is you take this and you try to see if you can check off every single one in one single day. See, I like a police officer knows how to have a little fun, and I do love me a challenge. Kidding, of course. If I manage to check off all of these in one single day, don't worry, officer. I would never upload that video to YouTube. All right, well, enough joking around. Let's get started on the KLR, the apocalypse bike, henceforth known as Toe Cutter. First things first, as with any bike that's been sitting outside in Florida and with its oak trees, we're going to start with a vacuum cleaner. Now, uh, before I do anything else, let me go ahead and throw this battery on the charger. No use in working on a bike if you don't have a charged up battery. Uh, 
That doesn't look right. <laughs> uh, last time I checked, I thought oil was supposed to be a little bit thicker than that. It smells like gasoline too. I think this oil is just full of gas. Which that can happen sometimes if you try to crank something a whole bunch and it doesn't start, but that also... Uh oh. We're about to overflow my freaking thing here. Yeah, that's definitely gasoline in the oil. Okay, now that I got my pan emptied, I will tell you the whole gasoline in the oil is actually not as uncommon as you might think. And probably I would say, cause I already knew this had a carb issue where the carb was leaking. Usually you see it when uh, uh, you're trying to start a motorcycle or a car and you keep on cranking it and cranking it and cranking it and you fill the cylinders full of gas and then the gasoline ends up leaking down into the oil. With motorcycles you see a lot with just like literally just a, a float stuck open or a needle stuck open in the carburetor and what will happen is I know it's that you would just like oh it should just go into the air box but it will actually make its way down into the crankcase sometimes so I've seen this before it's not that weird but once again uh, this is why you should probably change that oil before you do anything else on an unknown motorcycle. Even if it had started up and ran, that would have been a no bueno going down the road. I'm gonna leave this out and really just let that sucker really completely drain out of there. Hop over here to the other side of the bike and we'll take a look at this air filter, which judging from the amount of gasoline in the oil is probably also soaked in gasoline. If I had to make a guess. It actually looks fine, um, besides the fact that it's not really attached. See, uh, it's not actually on the bottom, which, uh, you know, that may be where our carburetor problems came from. So this filter is just kind of like line on top. You'll see this bottom part right here. It's actually supposed to be around that cage, not just on top of it like that. So let's fix that. It's also got no oil on it, which is fine for the street. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to run oil on a street filter, but at least just a little bit of spray oil, I would. But since we're building this to be an adventure bike, we're gonna go ahead and oil the filter. Someone tried. Uh, someone definitely tried, but uh, not quite, buddy, not quite. And it wasn't the guy who bought it. It would have been the previous owner. The guy who bought it to donate uh, didn't really do any work to the bike. He bought it like this, so I'm not giving him a hard time. But yeah, this wasn't blocking any dirt at all, which might have led to our carburetor problems. With the amount of gas that's probably been leaking through the air box, I decided to just go ahead and replace the filter because when they get soaked with gas, just the, the glue that holds them together can get really bad. So we're just gonna put a brand new filter on it and oil this one up. Really don't need a lot of this. And like I said, some people even run street filters without any oil in them at all. But like I said, it's supposed to be an off-road vehicle, so we're gonna put some oil on it. That looks fun. Yeah. When putting your filter over the cage, make sure it's actually over the cage. That's much better. Well, I got pulled away from the KLR650 tow cutter for one more ride with Shay Lisi. You know, it's overcast and like 72 degrees out. We got to enjoy these days while we still got them because we're coming right up to, <laughs> to the time when it's going to be 95 degrees and 100% humidity every single day in Florida. So I ain't saying no to a ride. This will definitely be the last time you ever ride it. No, I, don't, I think this is probably the last time I ride it. Yeah, nothing bad could happen in the last time, right? <laughs> because I thought it. Now she at least is feeling bad because she had to get extra battery for a GoPro, the bike needs gas, she's just having a hard time getting her stuff together. You know, I, I could keep it to myself that the Pan America actually needs gas too, but I think I'll let her know. Besides, hanging out the Robin Sob earlier, I don't want the, the stabbing grab to get jealous. I would've wanted to stop anyway. <laughs> Fun pills on the ground, delicious. Dude, there's pills, there's wood tips, there's blunt wrap. You can make a whole little kit just about with the stuff that's on the ground outside the stab and grab. One last tank of stab and grab special juice for whoever wins this motorcycle. Oh, by the time my video comes out, somebody's name has already been called. <laughs> yeah, the KLR, nah, that'll keep for another hour or two. This weather, eh, we, ain't keep, we ain't keeping this for much longer. Now we ain't keeping the storm sir for much longer. Oh, I called it the storm sir, not Velcro fly. And we're not keeping the Velcro fly for much longer either. Like I said, by the time my video comes out, that bike is already gonna belong to someone else. Oh, well, I mean, technically it belongs to someone else already. They just don't know it yet. Wonder who it's gonna be. Usually someone cool, because the people who enter all the bike giveaways we do, they know they're donating 100% of their money to charity. They usually end up being pretty cool people. Shh, 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 the fuzz. 
Oh my gosh, I forgot my checklist at home. I don't even know how many statutes I've violated right now. Jaleesi's definitely violating one with no, no license plate on her bike up there, but come on, it's for charity. Does that work? Well, I mean, I'm really hoping, I'm really counting on it, so let's hope so. What a terrible night for a curse. The curse of carburetors. Obviously, something is wrong with that carburetor in there, which is why it's leaking fuel all the way inside the crankcase. Could be stuck floats, a bent needle. There's a there's a bunch of different stuff it could be. It could just be dirty. Obviously, there's vents that are clogged if it, it didn't leak out of the bike and instead leaked into the crankcase. Yeah, there's just a lot of different stuff that could be wrong. So what you really need to do is you just need to pull it apart. Or what you can do is you can go on Amazon and you can ask Buddy Bezos pretty please for a brand new carburetor, which is what I did. I'd rather just spend the 40 bucks on a brand new carburetor, the Buddy Bezos special, then go through that and cross my fingers that it's got, you know, a worn out body or something is just gonna go bad again. Carburetors, at this point, you can get them for so little money. For me, and a lot of people get mad at this, it's almost like a wear item. When they really start to mess up or something goes wrong, I just replace them. Unless it's a high dollar carb, if it was an s, &S or Electron, but just one of these cheap CVs that you can get for 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon, literally same day shipping. Yeah. I just replace it. Okay, decided this was a little easier with the tank off. I feel like I probably could have gotten all this stuff undone with the tank still on there, but it's a little easier with the tank off and why make my life harder? One of the ideas behind the KLR is it's basically almost a dirt bike, so why not treat it like one and take the friggin' tank off? All right, one carburetor removed. It's the next day, we're back on the KLR 650. Once again, I have gotten the rocks risers because not only these bars look terrible, and I know that looks really aren't a thing, but I don't know, man, there's just something about seven ace bars, even when they have a crossbar like this, that always bug me out. I've had bikes with seven ace bars that you take off road before and they always seem to just bend at the slightest drop and it really, really sucks. I think the cross brace would probably do a lot to stop that, but, but I will tell you one of the reasons you always see me putting fat bars on stuff is I have fat bars on my KTM 300 XCW and I've done every Thing up to like drop that bike off a six foot embankment and have it hit the ground handlebars first and those pro taper fat bars have never ever ever bent once that's one of the really cool things about rocks risers not only do they help you out with the adjustability and a little bit of rise if you need it but they go from seven eighths at the bottom to either seven eighths up top or one and an eighth so you can run a fat bar for me personally on anything you're gonna be taking off road and you want to do a little bit of upgrade to it it is a absolute necessity standard nuts on a metric bike Sing has a hydraulic clutch on it. It's got a Magura, but I'm just like, is this, did this come stock? I would have assumed that these old KLR 650s would have a, a standard clutch, and I wonder if somebody added this Magura later on. Look, I think, I think it's aftermarket, but I don't know. Oh, I was wondering what was up with these grips. They're actually heated. That doesn't look like it's in the best shape. I guess I can put it back on. It doesn't really matter. I can just slide it on the new grip and slide them over it. California quiet. Grip heaters turn out to be bogus. I'll just pull them off later and put some different grips on this, but might as well try them out. You know, no reason to, no reason to toss them if they work. I just, looking at it, I have my doubts. now I'm putting this mirror back on here, but I'm either just gonna get a new switch housing over here, or I'm gonna put those double takes on it. I haven't made up my mind yet. I like double takes, I think they're really neat, but the biggest problem with them is the double takes just, they shake, you know? And this is a single cylinder bike. Having a shaky mirror is not the best. Pro tapers, baby, only way to fly. Things I should have checked earlier. Uh, the Peacock works, but it does leak, and I have to put that on the list of things to order. Luckily, I think old Betty Bezos should have me covered on the Peacock. 
All right, guys, so off camera, I had a little battle with this thing, doubly intensified by the fact that that carburetor is not the easiest thing to get on and off the boot. So I didn't want to take it off, but I've had to remove the float bowl about three times because I kept leaking, overflowing, which was the problem earlier as well. It was starting to get very frustrating because even when I was manually pushing the float bowl needle up in there, it was still leaking out, which should not happen. What I eventually realized is I probably didn't need to replace this carb anyway, but a new carb on an old bike is never a bad idea. As you see here, um, maybe if you are not familiar with KLRs, you go, cool, that looks like a gas line, which is whoever was the previous owner, that's what they thought too, because that's the one that the gas was hooked up to when I took it apart. Well, I put it back together and it was leaking everywhere and I was just beating my head against the wall until I looked down and I said, oh, well, uh, alrighty then. We've got the leak solved. We're all good, let's put it back together and uh, after all this work, let's finally see if it starts. All right, boys, it's the moment of truth. Will the KLR disappoint? Is, is this truly the cockroach of motorcycles? La Cucaracha, the only thing left after the bombs drop. No whammy, so hopefully no fires either. Oh, probably make sure this sucker's in neutral. I don't know if it has a neutral safety switch. That would have been hilarious. Still no start. <laughs> Still no start. Well, I can always jump the relay down here. Of course, that starter relay is right next to where I was leaking gas everywhere. All right, give me a second. Success. We have ignition. Ooh, we have fire. And this grip is hot. So I don't know about these grips. Like that grip's hot, but this one isn't. So the heated grips were on. I really don't. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't trust the heated grips. Not into it. I don't. I don't really like it. I'm being honest with you guys. It kind of freaks me out. Of course, I have no frame of reference for heated grips because I'm from Florida. We don't use heated grips. <laughs> Never a doubt in my mind. Oh, I had to contend with a little bit of an oil leak over here, right out of this uh, filter. I had the little grommet misaligned on the oil filter over here. But I'm glad that I did, because when I took the cover off to check it out, what I saw was the oil was definitely not the correct color. There was so much gasoline in this engine, but I think there was just so much residual gasoline in there. The oil just looked really, really gross and foamy. Run it for a little bit, drain it again, and put fresh oil in there. I hate wasting the money, but better safe than sorry. Yeah, look at your oil, and it's run for about two minutes, and the stuff looks like chocolate milk. Not a great sign. Plus, I called in a 1-800-ASK-SHELBY, and he said, yeah, if you pulled a gallon of gas out of that crankcase, you should probably run a little bit of oil in it, drain it, and then refill it. Let's try this again. Even then, Shelby said I should probably only run the second batch of oil in this for a few hundred miles and then give it another oil change just to be absolutely certain. Well, it's gonna bring us to about the end of this video with the KLR, although we still got a few videos left to make with the KLR. There's definitely some stuff that we need to get done to it. I'm excited about it. It's my first time messing around with the Kawasaki KLR. I don't really know a lot about them, but luckily the internet's full of resources. This is one of those motorcycles that has been around for so long and it's beloved by so many people that you pretty much anything you need to know, somebody has already figured it out in a forum somewhere. And I also have our very own Smokey the Van who owned a KLR 650 as my own personal resource I can call upon. I've got some other stuff ordered for it. We've got some some Tusk aluminum adventure bags for it. You heard how loud it was. It's got this FMF exhaust on it and also the pipe is broken and underneath it. So I actually just ordered another exhaust for the bike. Got some other stuff coming as well, but I wanna put the question to you guys. What else do you think is just absolutely has to be on this for it to be an adventure bike? I know it's already an adventure bike and some people will be like, it doesn't need anything. This is all just farkles and bull crap, but hey, come on, man, we're making it fun. It's gonna be a giveaway bike. We're raffling this thing off for charity. We're gonna do a two week only raffle and somebody's gonna get this with 100% of all the proceeds going directly to benefit Forgotten Angels. When I say 100%, I mean 100%. That's why I wanna take this time to do a huge shout out to my Patreon, all my Patreon supporters, everybody in the Shade Tree Army Discord. I don't talk about this all the time because it seems kind of like virtue signaling so I don't like to blow it up, although I probably have more people on there if I talked about it more. Anyway, all the money that I take in on Patreon actually 100% goes to both buying and fixing up raffle vehicles 
vehicles for Forgotten Angels. It also goes to the camp out, helping out with stuff like that. But basically we use all of it to both make raffle vehicles better, fix them up, make videos on them, take trips on them. We use it to do that and promote the raffle and we use it to help fund the camp out. So a huge thanks to all you guys. You guys are doing your part over there. If you want to join the Patreon, there's a link down below. There's not any perks. I'm going to tell you that right now. The perk is you get to say that you threw a couple bucks at helping build these bikes to raffle off for Forgotten Angels and help them out and did something nice for charity and the Shade Tree Army Discord and that's it. So don't expect anything else. Huge thanks to all you guys out there, all you Discord weirdos, all you guys in there, and of course all the people who uh, join here on YouTube. I use that money for this as well. If you see that join button, that also all goes directly to these builds. But in the meantime, we still got a Goldwing to give away. This one's just next. The Goldwing is getting them given away next week. This video is coming out Sunday. I'd originally planned to pull the winner for the Goldwing, the 1998 GL 1500 on Wednesday, but we're going to be out of town. We're doing something kind of exciting. So we're going to go ahead and move that to Friday because I really want to do it on a live stream with David, with Cindy, with Shay, and have everyone all together when we do it. So you guys are getting a couple extra days if you want the GL 1500. And then after that, we're doing the KLR 650. I'm really excited. We've even got some cool stuff after that. So leave me a comment down below. Let, you, let me know what you would like to see done to make the KLR 650 an adventure bike. I mean, it is an adventure bike. Make it more adventure-y. I don't know. It's just look, it's just like a big dirt bike right now. We're trying to make it so full of adventure. So people know when they look at you, they know you're an adventurer. That's what you got to do. You gotta, they're going to know you're on an adventure. Links down below if you still want to try to get that gold wing and of course the KLR 650 coming up next. Also, every single ticket bought. These aren't prizes that are listed, okay? The prize that is listed is a dream house. We're giving away a house or $250,000 to a house of your choosing, whichever one you happen to pick. We're just, me and the Discord boys, we're just giving away these in the meantime. Huge thanks to everybody who's donated. Tickets available down below. Huge thanks to my man who donated the KLR 650. Huge thanks to everybody out there who's helping me do this and helping change the world. This is something we're doing together. Gotten Angels, it's, it's gonna get bigger and we're gonna change more lives and we're all doing it together because we can actually make a difference in this world and it feels pretty damn good. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade Tree Army! Shade Tree Army! Who will risk it all to end the evil call of Shade Tree? Army! Shade Tree Army! They never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.